I think he forgot to say hocus pocus. <laughs> He's lucky. Most people who get dragged behind cars in the South don't live to tell the tale. That was the great Moudini, and his botched escape magically transported him to the ICU. You don't see me calling myself Daniel the Handsome and Hilarious. I prefer to let my looks and talent speak for themselves. I don't like magic, because I'm not five. Like banjo music, PG comedies, and everything else Steve Martin cares about, magic is completely irrelevant. <laughs> I couldn't make it halfway through the prestige, so going out to a magic show is utterly incomprehensible. And just so you know, if your sexy assistant was truly sexy, she wouldn't be hanging out with a magician. Seriously, you're that impressed with Chris Angel levitating? I'll tell you how he doesn't do it, by using magic. Yeah. He's on his tiptoes, you stupid whore. If magic was real, David Blaine would have used it to stay famous. The great Moudini didn't pull out in time and ended up getting yanked across a quarter mile of asphalt. So like Copperfield, I tricked him into joining me at my private rape island for this week's Web Redemption. <laughs> Get open this goddamn thing! Please. Oh. <laughs> so there's a trick involved. You don't just panic and struggle. I wasn't a fan before, but I might be turning around on this leather pants thing. <laughs> Michael, your stage name is The Great Moudini. How'd you come up with that? One of the track officials announced me as The Great Moudini. Just kind of stuck with me through the race fans and stuff. How long have you been doing professional magic? Probably about 15 years. What's your favorite magic trick? Showing both hands empty and then just uh, snapping a finger and maybe just pulling out a scarf or something, you know. Damn it, you devil man. This is probably my favorite. I carry it around in my pocket all the time. How fast can you make a hamburger disappear? Oh, I'm, I'm screwed up. <laughs> I'm screwed up pretty quick. <laughs> can you do some tricks for me now? Uh, I just did one. Tell me where that was. It was at a speedway over in Atlanta, Georgia. How many people were there watching that? 5,000. Tell me what happened that day. I had a 100-foot chain. Everything was just set to go. And when it took off, uh, I realized I was too far. I knew I was in trouble. I got the right side out, and the left side just kind of took my wrist and just ripped it off. So that was not part of the trick at all? No, that wasn't part of the trick. If you wouldn't have gotten out of that, would have that thing just dragged you around the track a few if, times? If it hadn't have ripped my wrist apart and released itself, yeah, it would have killed me. Did you black out when it happened? I blacked out when it happened, yeah. Did you take a helicopter ride or no? No, they, they had an ambulance right there. Probably could have got to the hospital faster. You just jumped in the car. There, there you go. <laughs> just told them, keep going with yeah. your good hand. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Was that the only cartwheel you've ever done? That was the best one and the only one I've ever done. <laughs> Whose fault was that? It was my fault. You know, I should have took more time and got closer to the car, but I was in a hurry. I was hot and tired, ready to get the hell out of there, get my paycheck and go, you know? I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> Did the driver apologize? Oh, he, he, was, he was in tears. So it wasn't a woman driver? I'm alive, ain't I? <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Who are your favorite magicians? My favorite all time is David Copperfield. <laughs> Mary Kill. Siegfried and Roy, David Copperfield, David Blaine. David Copperfield. Just all of them? Open up the salt for me. Okay. And I'll show my hands empty. And I'll take a little bit of salt and I'll pour it right here. I'm watching it go in. Okay. Get the excess off and what I'll do is pour it into your hand. Okay. Like, like this. It's, it's totally gone. The, the salt has vanished. Now what I'll do is I'll wave my hand across and then I'll pour it actually into your hand. You know, like that. What, what, what do I do with all this salt? I have a cholesterol problem anyway. <laughs> have you done the trick since then? Not since the accident. Uh, have you thought about doing it since then? I'd like to go back before that same audience and, and redo it and, and show them that it can be done. Do you think they left that day believing it could not be done? I think that left that day with mixed emotions, like, uh, He's an idiot, or... Or we just watched somebody die. A lot of them didn't know that I was alive until the next day and it came on the news. All right, Michael, let's get out of here and get ready for tonight's big show. Let's do it. I brought in a famous magician to give you some advice. Please welcome Teller.
practice once in a while. Well, that was helpful. Okay, I don't know anything about magic, other than it's not real. But I do know something about showmanship. I'm supposed to hit the button when I... <laughs> this is your new look. I don't know if my fat ass fit in that. Oh, your fat ass is gonna fit in that, because we had an audience waiting for you. Ladies and gentlemen and present of all ages, prepare to be amazed. I give you the great Rudy. You look great. Been working out, I see. The world wants to know, are you ready to give it another shot? Hell yeah! Don't worry, I made a few modifications just in case you screw it up again. And don't worry, if you can't break free, I'm pretty sure the bumper will just tear off this thing. All right. Ta-da! We all know racing's dangerous, but remember, it's also pointless. <laughs>